there's been this sequence of abstraction that we've gone through as programmers over the decades, right? Originally, you had to program your computer in machine language. Then there was assembly language. Then we had this sequence of higher level languages like Fortran and C or C++. And nowadays, we have stuff like C Sharp or Haskell or JavaScript that are even further away from the machine. And the justification for this is like, look, the, we're working at a higher level of abstraction. The higher your level of abstraction, the more you work you get done because you don't have to worry about scheduling machine instructions and stuff. So we're really being smart and we're saving effort. And I think that's actually true. Like, I don't think we want to program things in assembly language. That's a waste of time. But somewhere through this chain, it becomes wrong. And that, that's how people are wrong a lot of the times, right? Like, you start out by being right, and then you extrapolate it too far into wrong territory. Um, but the important thing to all of this is that we only see one side of it. We see that we're being smart and sa saving effort, and we don't see the flip side of all of these things, which is that there's a corresponding loss of capability, right? Because I don't program in assembly anymore, I no longer am able to program in assembly, right? If I don't, uh, you know, if I, if I use languages that are uh, too high level and I'm a little bit lazy, as people often are, I don't know where my variables live in memory or what they look like or even how remotely how big they are, right? I certainly don't know what the CPU is doing in response to the code that I've written. Um, I'm maybe scared to use non-managed languages because the very idea of memory allocation just seems too hard and scary. Or even if I'm a person who programs in a non-managed language, Maybe I'm afraid of pointers and start generating this cult of, of being afraid of pointers and what to do about that like the modern C++ people do, right? And so the rhetoric that we have is, I'm being smart, I shouldn't have to do the low-level stuff, right? But part of the reality is the loss of capability that corresponds to those choices. And both of those things can be true at the same time. I'm not saying that we're not being smart by going up some level. Well, a little bit. I mean, there's a problem, which is that the point of going up all these levels is supposed to be to make everybody more productive. But programmers are not more productive now than they used to be. In fact, it looks to me like productivity per programmer is approaching zero. And if that's true, then where's the proof that going up this ladder of abstraction further and further is really helping? So the way to at least, you know, get a feel for this is you look at a company like, you know, Twitter or Facebook, it employs a lot of people. And you look at their product and you say, how much does that product change from year to year, right? How much functionality is added to Twitter year after year? How much functionality is added to Facebook? It's not that much, right? And then just divide by the number of engineers at the company, right? Which is thousands or tens of thousands sometimes. That's a very small number when you do that division, right? It's, it's gonna be pretty close to zero. Um, so what's going on, right? And, and to illustrate again the difference in productivity and that it's not just me that thinks this, uh, I'm gonna show an excerpt from an interview uh, with Ken Thompson, who is the original author of the Unix operating system. And he's talking about the time at Bell Laboratories when he first started making uh, Unix on a computer that by modern standards had like no software at all, right? At some point, I realized, without knowing it up until that point, that I was three weeks from an operating system uh, with three programs, one a week. An editor, I needed an editor to write code. Uh, I needed an assembler to turn the code into language I could run. And I needed a little kernel kind of overlay, call it an operating system. and. Luckily, right at that moment, my wife went on a three-week vacation <laughs> to take my, my uh, 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 one-year-old, roughly, uh, uh, to visit my in-laws, who were in California. Uh, disappeared all alone, and one week, one week, one week, and we had Unix. Uh, Yeah, I, I think programmers aren't quite as productive these days as they used to be. <laughs> yeah, he says programmers aren't productive these days like that, and everybody laughs. 
But it's funny, but it's not funny, right? It's really not funny when you consider like how much waste there must be in the difference between how productive people are and how productive they could be if everything wasn't so messed up, right? So I've made a case that robustness of software is declining, productivity of programmers is declining. So if you're going to say that actual technology of software is somehow advancing, it seems contrary to those two facts, right? So I think the argument that software is advancing is clearly false, except again, maybe in tiny local bubble-like areas. So now why is it so bad? Why is it so hard to write programs? Why are we so miserable when we try to write programs today? Um, it's because we're adding too much complication to everything, right? And I have a way that I think about this called you can't just, right? Where there's all kinds of things that you used to be able to do on a computer that you can't do today, right? So today, you can't just copy a program from one computer to another and have it work, right? You need to have an installer or like a flat pack on Linux or like containers if you're a server hacker news guy, right? Um, and so people think this is cool. Oh, now we have containers. That's an advantage, or it's an advancement of software technology. All containers are doing is get us back to the 1960s when we didn't have to do any of this stuff, except it's actually not because it's adding all these steps that you have to do, right? And things you have to maintain. So now let's think about for a second, like, why do you need an installer to install software? Is it because of the CPU? Not really. Like, imagine you have, well, you know, imagine you have some x64 machine code, and don't worry about how you got it into a computer's memory, but you just got it there, and you just jump to it. You set the program counter to that code. That code is going to do the same thing on a Windows PC as it does on a Mac, as it does on a Linux machine, as it does on an Xbox, as it does on a PlayStation 4, all right? Because all of those systems use compatible CPUs. So what's the installer for? The installer is to get around the incompatibilities that we added at the OS layer, which is this immensely complex thing that we mostly don't want, actually. And so we, we tend to think about operating systems as adding capabilities to a system, to, to the, the system of the hardware and the software, but they also remove capabilities like compatibility, right? And it's often very arbitrary. And it, it, it doesn't get any worse than I think it does for us today when it comes to shading languages. Anyone who ships 3D engines is going to know what I'm talking about. So it used to be that if you wanted to compile a program for many platforms, you could write it in some portable language like C or C++, and you might have to do some little if-defs to modify it for the different platforms, but you could do that, and it's mostly the same program. Today, you can't do that because we've decided if you're running a shader, it needs to be in a different programming language on every single platform, even if the hardware is the same, right? So if you have an x86 CPU and an NVIDIA GPU, then on one OS, you need to write your shader in metal shading language, and on another OS, you need to write it in HLSL, right? And, and they're different, even though they're the same. And so you either have to rewrite everything n times, where n is large, or you have to start using auto-translation systems uh, to rewrite your shaders, and those come with a lot of complexity and annoyance and bugs. And why, though? A shader is a simpler program than the old programs that we used to write. But why have we made it harder to build a simpler program? It doesn't make any sense. We don't care, right? So the list of things you can't just do. You can't just copy a program. You can't just statically link. You can't just draw pixels to the screen. Oh my god, the number of steps you have to do to draw a pixel today is uh, crazy. Uh, you can't just write a shader. You can't just compile a program on Windows without a manifest and stuff. And on these new closed platforms, you can't just run an executable unless it's signed through this like whole process, right? And all of these things and many more that are not on this list add friction, bugs, time, engineering time, and headspace that keeps us from thinking about interesting things to actually do, 